right now on Push Girls. Like, moving is such a pain in the ass. Yeah. Like, honestly, it's just time for a grown-up apartment. An apartment can look great on paper, but then you get in there and you realize, oh, these are townhomes. Did you know that? When I looked out the window and realized I was that high up, that could be a safety hazard. I go to high schools all over with my dad to talk to the students about the dangers of drinking and driving. I never thought I would be sitting on wheels at the age of 17. I feel like my dad, after the accident, he's developed this pedestal for me to be on. It's almost like I'm really convinced. I think this has been your, it's hard to say, Yeah. kind of your path in life. I feel like I can't do all the things that he wants to do right now because, you know, I still am a teenager. I feel like he expects more than I can actually do. I push. Beyond limits. I push. Beyond what's expected. Yeah. Beyond beauty. Beyond my wildest dreams. I'm a push girl. I'm a push girl. I'm a push girl. I'm a push girl. When you can't stand up, stand out. excited you're getting water. You can hear it. That's why you chirp when you hear water. My apartment is really old and stained carpet. When I use the bathroom, I can't even shut the door. And it's always hot for no apparent reason. It doesn't feel very inviting. I don't even like to be there, much less me inviting other people. I've been living here for five years, and it's just time for a grown-up apartment. Timmy! Shut up, I'm looking for the number. You have wrap up. Are you ready to see the bachelorette pad? I want to see the bachelor pad, yeah. I've never been to your house. I know. You want to see the rest of it? Yeah. It's really exciting, let me tell you. Oh, my God. I love Get excited. Okay. No, I'm serious. OK. I've never had the girls over to my apartment. I think somewhat I feel a little embarrassed by it. It's not something that I want to share with people. I'm not proud of it. When I first moved here, I was like, well, I'm only going to be here for a year, and then five years later. Just finding an accessible apartment in the first place was a nightmare. The thought of doing it again and having to pack everything up just drives me crazy. There's so much stuff that I can't even reach, and rolling around in the clutter is pretty impossible. I don't even feel comfortable bringing guys home. Like, moving is such a pain in the ass, yeah. but like, honestly, I'm to the point where I need change. Mia needs a new apartment, because the one she has now is like a college dorm. She needs an upgrade. So what are you looking for? Like, what's the perfect apartment for you? Like, what do you envision the most? Um, OK. So I want a one bedroom. I want hardwood floors. Mm. Like, that's a must, yeah. for sure. Parking. Yeah. Safe parking. Hot neighbors. That have parties. That have parties. This is sounding really mature. <laughs> divorced when I was about 10 or 11 and I live with my mom and I rely on her to do a lot of things. Can I have some more? I'd get it, but I'm like stuck okay. in this thing. <laughs> Thanks. Did you make the stew? I did. Hmm. I think about that night all the time. It was my senior year and seven of us piled into a five-seater car. I just remember seeing this tree in front of me, and it just, it was lights out from there. The sad thing is, is we passed my house, and we went into the next town, and then we were gonna come back, and then they were gonna drop me off. I got a knock on the door at 3.30 in the morning, and there's a, the cop sitting there, and he goes, I have something to tell you. Your daughter's been in an accident. I didn't know what to do. I froze. You don't know if she's bleeding out. You don't know if she's um, crying for her mom. You don't know. You don't know anything at that time. They don't tell you anything. The moment I saw her, was I knew that everything was going to be OK. I have her for the rest of my life. And it's OK that she's in the chair, because I have her. 
When I was in the hospital, I wanted to speak to my high school about what happened to me, and we had an assembly when I got home. After that, my dad and I founded the Walk and Roll Foundation. We go and we speak to high schools all over about the dangers of drinking and driving. Tomorrow I have like the speaking, I have three assemblies, and then three. nighttime. Yeah. Different schools? No, same school. Oh, okay. You're coming, right? I'm hoping to. It's so weird though, like being back at like a high school and um, like being in the school and like seeing the high schoolers. Like at first I was like, yeah, like that's so cool, you know, I'd love to do that. And now I'm like, wait a second. Yeah, it's kind of like hard. bring back memories, you know? Yeah. So you get stronger each time you do it. You do it so good. Thanks. I'd be crying the whole time. Oh, I, I, I'm like, you know, like I have to like contain myself. Second. Cool. Thank you. One more? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. If I'm gonna move, I'm gonna get some cool new furniture. So the girls and I decided to come down to the Rose Bowl flea market. Those are cute. Oh yeah, that's cute. This is so not her decor. Mia, you could accent that with any color you want. You could put those two together and make a mini couch. I'm glad Mia's finally looking for a new apartment. At her age, she needs a place that she could be proud of. Oh my god, Mia, this is like the one you yeah. want, kind of. Do you like the color, or you can just paint Oh, it even has a mirror. And you can stick rings in there. That's rings. cool. And it's the perfect height for us. Right? It's way perfect height. I like it. How are we going to get out of here? There's definitely the challenge of trying to get what you bought out of this place. <laughs> got it? Oh, my. Oh, Lord, and the... Oh, my God. Oh, my That's God. Great. Great. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> The Rose Bowl was a success. Now I just have to find a place to put this in. I asked you to switch and you said no, and now you can ask her to switch? Yeah, because she's got the easy side. So just three minutes, I need you to kind of breathe and help me breathe. Okay. Um, my dad is kind of like my manager. When we get to the schools, he'll set everything up. He'll make sure everything's going smoothly. Nice to meet you. Hi, Chelsea. Nice to meet you. Hi. Hey. Nice to see you. Let's give a warm welcome to John Hill. It's hard for me to see my dad speak. Morning, Harbor. Hi. How you guys doing? Because then I relive, you know, what I put not only myself through, but like my dad, you know, my family. The last thing I remembered was my face on the carpet and my cell phone lit against the carpet. And I don't know if I was down for two seconds or two minutes, but my life changed from that moment as soon as I sat back up and got up and picked that phone up and tried to focus and I lost my focus for a couple months. Usually I leave the room because uh, the video brings back a lot of memories and uh, it was probably a good solid year. I woke up many times during the night, usually around four or five o'clock in the morning with a kind of like night terrors. Every time I speak, I have to relive the whole event all over again. And it never gets easy. There she is, Chelsea. You good? I'm good. You good? Yeah, I'm good. I know this is also really important for my dad. He's worked so hard on our foundation. This means the world to him. If you guys do ha decide to go out, and uh, go out with your friends and stuff. I just want, you know, because I'm still a teenager, I'm not going to tell you guys what not to do, but I want you guys to think a little past that. And I just, I would hope you guys think, you know, okay, if I'm going to go out, if you are, please have a designated driver. Thank yeah. you guys so much for coming. <laughs> When we speak, it brings up a lot of tough memories. But I just kind of put on a happy face to make everyone else happy. Because why do you want to be around someone who's depressed? That's not fun. That's just going to bring you down. So I just kind of keep it in, put on a happy face, and make everyone else happy. So we got a, a gig coming up pretty soon. 
I don't want to let my dad down, but I'm not sure this is the only thing I want to do with my life. snuck up on me. Yeah. Yeah. Before the accident, my dad and I weren't really close. But having the foundation has brought us super close now. And sometimes I think he's more into it than I am. These things are really cool. They're like, they like pop in your mouth. That looks like salmon eggs. I know, I know. Don't, and you're going to eat that? Don't remind, they don't taste salmon like eggs, it. Salmon eggs is going to be fishy. It. You know, it's funny with Chelsea. I've always been kind of inspired by her spirit. Uh, but since the accident and things that have happened, She's uh, changed who I am inside, just watching her and being along with her and, and with her. Let's go down here. OK. I feel like my dad, after the accident, has developed this pedestal that I'm supposed to be on. Everything's been so positive. You know, no yeah. bumps. I mean, everything's just fallen into place. And you've just blown everybody away. I feel like I can't do all the things that he wants to do right now because, you know, I still am a teenager. I still want to go with my friends and have fun, and I still want to have that freedom. But I feel like sometimes he expects more than I can actually do. Remember how we talked about, you know, getting it to a bigger scale? Yeah. So we got a, a gig coming up pretty soon. I feel like a lot of people expect a lot from me because they think, oh, since you were in this accident, you should be Miss Perfect, and you shouldn't make any mistakes now. And it's almost like I'm really convinced, and I, I think you, you might feel it, but I think this has been your, this was your, gosh, I, it's hard to say. Yeah. Kind of your path in life. You know, I'd much rather see you up and, and uh, walking and. Yeah, it doesn't mean I wouldn't change it, you know? Like, Yeah. I mean, I did learn a lot from the accident, you know? But of course I wish I was walking. I don't want to let my dad down, but I'm not sure this is the only thing I want to do with my life. That is pretty awesome. I've been doing a lot of research, so I have a bunch of new apartments to go check out. Tiffany's coming along to help me in my search, so hopefully we will find my dream apartment. 3711. It's good to have Tiff with me because there are things that I don't think about so much in regards to accessibility, and then I'm like, oh, duh. These are actually not a, these are townhomes. Did you know that? <laughs> I don't know. Is it worth getting out? Yeah, let's go to the next one. Over it. Because here's the thing, like, you can call all these places and be yeah. like, oh, is it accessible? And they'll be like, uh, well, I don't know. And then you realize, like, all you need to know is if there's stairs if to get there's in. there's stairs, that's all. So just, like, yeah. don't ever say, like, is it wheelchair accessible? Cause they because they don't know what that yeah. means. An apartment can look great on paper, you know, with all the details that they list. But then you get in there and you realize, oh, I can't fit it in the bathroom, or it's hard to transfer to the tub, or just the pens, you know? I think I could reach this thing, but I don't. Yeah, I think you can. I know, but I don't want to break it. What if it comes off the wall? No, it's, it looks really bolted in. All right, I'll try. OK. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure You're Mia? I am. And you Hi, are? Tiffany. Hi, Tiffany. I have put a lot of clients in here, a lot of women. We're going to go around this way. Oh, my god. Oh, nice. Hard to No. Do you have other people in wheelchairs that live here, or have you ever? Do you know? I don't know. Oh, yeah? I love the old Hollywood building. It was cool. It had nice features, and there was something really charming about it. However, when I looked out the window and realized I was that high up, you know, that could be a safety hazard at some point. You know, being in a building with an elevator where you have to rely on the elevator, you know, part of me is like, oh, it'll never happen, you know? And then the other part of me is like, wait a minute, I live in LA where there are plenty of earthquakes, and that's a legitimate thing to worry about. 
especially, you know, easy access to get down if you need to. Wow, if I wasn't in a wheelchair, would I totally take that place? Right this way, ladies. Get the nice, Tiffy. nice spring flowers in bloom. Yes. Tiffy, fresh air doorway. Yay! And you're. Oh my God, that's a big one. Yeah. Yep. There we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Tiffy, come in. Welcome to your new apartment. Would this be the actual this unit? This is the actual unit. Yep. Correct. Back Lots patio of area. You get all that back patio area. Oh. She gets all the back patio area. My gosh. Oh my gosh, Mia. This is so freaking cute. It's like it perfect is. oven for you to practice cooking. Hey, Tiffy. And a refrigerator, and it's a big And it works? It works. Hey, <laughs> oh I hope it does. I think Mia's more open to the possibilities of change oh, and oh. the options that she has in her life now and just moving forward. Head on, let's do this, you know? I think that's what she's, she's embracing now. There's your bathroom. bathroom. Oh, this could even shut. After five years, having a bathroom door that closes is a really big deal for me. And it's so much easier to roll around here with the hardwood floors. My, my, my. This place feels like somewhere I could actually see myself living. So I would take the laundry bag oh and throw it in. And ah! Tiff, these washers were made for us. You don't have to do top down oh. and like reach your arm Those over. are the best washers ever. I know. This is definitely the one. And I'm glad Tiff came along to help me find it. I'm still a little anxious, but it's time to grow up. I think this is the one. This is it. Great. Yeah. Well, let's go get the paperwork ready and go back to my office. Yeah, let's go, Tiffies. Oh my gosh, man, this is rad. I know. I'm happy for you. with a reporter from Seventeen Magazine today to talk about my speaking engagement. So why is this so important for you to go to the schools and spread your message? Uh, I think it's important because in high school for me we didn't have really any awareness about drunk driving and the consequences of it and I feel like my message is reaching a lot of teens. What kind of questions do you usually get? Um, how do you drive? <laughs> <laughs> um, how do you get your chair in? Um, are you independent? All really simple questions, but mm -hmm. to an able-bodied person, they don't really know. Tell me a little bit about dating. What's that like for you? Oh have God. you dated since the accident? It's 17. Come on, you have to tell us. Yeah, um, yes, um, I've, I've dated since the accident. A lot of people don't realize that, like, you can still date and you can still be with someone, mm -hmm. even though you're in a wheelchair. It's just there's you're sitting on something, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I know you have an event yes. um, that I'm going to come shadow you at, Yay, which is really good. exciting. I've spoken at a lot of schools, and that's just it's just what I do now. So SAD contacted me, and they've asked me to speak at the high school. And it's Students Against Destructive Decisions. I'm really excited they asked me to. Awesome. I never in a million years would ever guess that like, I would be like in a magazine. That's ever. so cool. Yeah. So. From this article, millions of people are going to know my story. All right. Almost go time. OK, so I have little boxes in here we can put together to put like all the little crap. And then we should roll up this carpet. Today is a really big day because I am moving finally town. Yes. New place and nice furniture for once. One, two, oh. All right. Hold on. OK. Oh. Oh. Oh, no, don't push it. Don't push it that way. Just keep it straight. You're. OK, OK. Oh, all right, it's good, it's good. Moving is hard for anybody, but when you're in a wheelchair, you just, you wanna do, well, I wanna do everything. I always wanna do everything and not ask for help. So since I don't like to ask for help, I figure hiring movers is the only way to go. I'll let them do their job. Hello. Hi, how are you? 
All the boxes, like all the small boxes are go. The TV and the TV stand. Um, and then all the bigger boxes are in the kitchen. You can leave the bird, I'll take her. I think that's mostly it, because all my furniture I donated, so. Okay, so I'm gonna go and I'm gonna change and then I'll see you at the place. Okay. Shortly, okay? See you soon. Love Thank you. you. I love welcome. you. I love you more. Come on, baby. Say goodbye. Say it was nice living here. Change is good. Originally, I only thought I'd be here a year, and it's been five. Moving has been hard, but I'm excited to finally leave this place behind and start living somewhere I can be proud of. my new life than to have an impromptu housewarming party with my girls. Hi, Mace. Hi, Annie. Oh, my gosh. It's the first time in my adult life that I'm not ashamed of where I live, and I'm actually excited to have guests over. It's liberating. Aw, how are you, babe? I'm glad you guys are here. I'm so happy for Mia that she finally moved. This place is going to be great for her. All right, oh. here we go. To me, to our new place. Thank you. Oh, cheers. To big kids growing up. Oh, I can't believe it. Let's do this. You ready? You ready? Are you ready? Oh, oh yeah, I'm ready. Always ready. She was born, born ready. ready. It's the day of our speech for SAD, and Ashley, the news editor from Seventeen Magazine, has come to watch for the article she's writing about me. I'm always nervous before a show, but this one has a lot of added pressure. From this article, millions of people are going to know my story. All right. It's almost go time. Hello, everybody. How are you? My name is John Hill. I'm from Monterey, California. Uh, my daughter is Chelsea Hill, and it's a pleasure for us to be here. I know when the phone rang, it was uh, Chelsea's mom, and when I saw the name on the phone and the time it was, I knew that this this is not normal, something's wrong. And she was hysterical on the other end of the line and it took a while to get out what had happened and all she could say was Chelsea was in an accident and they airlifted her. It was like a dream. I remember pinching myself saying, this can't happen to my daughter. This is, this doesn't happen. I think I kind of want to be different than other speakers. I want them to see that just because you're out there having a good time doesn't mean that you're untouchable. So I'm Chelsea. A lot of people have asked me, you know, how are you so strong? And I just tell them that you never know how strong you are until the only choice that you're faced with is to be strong. Knowing that I put my parents through pain and my family and my friends, um, getting that, that call that next morning, all my friends were notified. It really hurt knowing that that one small decision that I thought at the time that was nothing changed my life and changed my family's life and all my friends forever. In the beginning, I had to learn how to dress myself. I had to lay down to dress. Um, I had to learn how to put tennis shoes on without wiggling my toes. It's so weird, trust me. And then trying to put heels on girls, oh, that's a mission. <laughs> you could tell that the kids were really interested. You hear a lot of the like doom and consequence talk from adults, but she made it real and brought it down to an everyday level, which I think is easier for kids to relate to. I worried she wouldn't be here. Two years later, she's she's flying high. She has her moments, but she flies high, and she's built a lot of respect that's well deserved. And I'm more than proud of her. Couldn't be more prouder. Like hold it and then click it. We were at a seminar about a month ago, and this gentleman he said that Chelsea had saved his daughter's life. His daughter was at a party, and they were going to get in the car to drive home, and she remembered Chelsea's story. Decided not to, and it, they got in an accident that night, and there was fatalities. That's the reward, you know? Whew. That's what it's all about. 
I think if I didn't have my dad, I wouldn't be as strong as I am today and motivated. He's really changed my life for the better. Reliving the accident is always gonna be tough, but if I can reach people through my message and help my dad get through it too, then maybe it's all worth it. All right, thank, well, nice you. thank you. Thank you for coming. I'll talk to you soon, yes, okay? for sure. All right, Definitely. take care. Bye.